three. And now, you're tuned in to the Navarro Miller Report, featuring the hottest in news, entertainment, sports, and all those topics for the mainstream audience. The Navarro Miller Report. Welcome, everyone, to the Navarro Miller Report. I'm your host, Dave Navarro. And I'm Jeremy Miller. And Jeremy, we're back. God, I know, I it's almost... good to be back with you guys. I'm not sure about him, but it's well, great to be back with you guys. I was going to say, I almost forgot what you look like. But now that I remember, I want to forget again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't lie. You've been begging to see me. What are you talking about? I see you anyway, even regardless if we start this show. Like, if we're on yeah, here I know. or not, I still I can't see get rid you, anyway. of you It's like a bad penny. Uh, yeah, you always turn up, unfortunately. That's yeah. that's the way it goes. Hey, Jeff, uh, thanks for saying that we're back. Yes, we are back. Uh, we're having, uh, hey, Cindy, how you doing? Want to welcome everybody that's on the stream on Facebook, on Twitch, Twitter, LinkedIn, you know, pretty much everywhere, you know, they can find us. <laughs> we're all over the place. <laughs> but uh, it's so good. It is actually feels good to be back. Uh, we did miss you guys. We missed all of you. I mean, you know, it's been a few months. We were a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, you know, Jeremy had to go get his boobs done or something. I don't know. <laughs> don't they look good? <laughs> They're so pretty. Except take that shirt off. I don't want to see that shirt ever again. Or that hat. Right here, baby. Right here. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I can't look at that. It burns my eyes every time I see that Just part for of you. Screen. First episode back, We. I had to do it for you, baby. Unfortunately, yes, yes, yes. You just had to go ahead and throw it in my face, especially since yeah. you guys have a brand new coach. And nah, 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 nah. Yeah, God, yeah things you. are looking pretty bright. I hate you You're so much. Right sitting now. in the hell I was sitting in for the last five years. Don't remind me of that, please. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to like deal with that. I just don't get it. Well, we're gonna get into that later. I'm, I gotta. I'm gonna. <laughs> but gripe let's not get sidetracked oh it's just so bad anywho yes cindy yes go bruins but unfortunately with everything that's going on who knows how that's gonna go right <laughs> just you know, leave that at that we got a great show for everybody today uh we have a few things to talk about in entertainment uh sports and florida man jeremy you got some news about florida man what, what's going on over there what is he at it again Florida man has made his return and this one is an absolute classic. So we have a Florida man who was arrested after calling 911 to have the police come test his meth because he believed he had been gypped. When the right. police showed when the police showed up, he told he handed them two baggies of a crystalline substance yeah. and said, I'm a very experienced drug user. I know what meth should feel like. I've had, you know, I've, I've, I, I took this. It does not. I think they gave me bath salts. I want you to go arrest this guy. He's selling fake meth and I want you to test it. And the sheriff said, OK, no problem. And they tested okay. it and it turned blue and it tested positive for meth. And they took him directly to jail and charged him with possession. He did not and pass go. The, he did not collect $200. The sheriffs <laughs> released a statement and they said they wanted everybody to know that the Florida sheriffs would be more than happy to provide this service for anyone who wanted. <laughs> so for any of you that are in Florida, <laughs> if you're not sure about your meth and Hey, it's Florida. We all know there's meth. Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you think, <laughs> you know, hey, call the sheriffs. They'll come test it for you and see if oh, it's yeah. meth, you oh, know. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, no. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead and do Th that. That was a good one. That was a good one. Oh, man. That's just but that's Florida for you. That's just Florida yep. for you right there. They, they go ahead and they come up with the most interesting of things like. Yes, that it's, it's a very creative state. Um, Well, here's another interesting bit of creativity out of Florida. We have a family who was throwing a birthday party and had bought a lot of supplies and yeah. they heard a bang out in the garage and they go out and stick their head a little bit in and peek. And there's an eight foot alligator chowing down on a pallet of diet Coke. What in the blue in his garage. Now this is Florida. 
gators are around. So this is not that unusual of a story. But the part that is incredibly weird to me is the statement after this to try and calm the public released by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission was alligators seldom bite people for reasons other than food. <laughs> That is a direct quote. It, I quit. This is, this is Florida's <laughs> reassuring. Oh, my God. Was they rarely bite humans for reasons other than food. What do you think we're afraid of? Gee, many Christmas, what a moron. That must have been the chief of police. Was he the same one that also went to go look, check to see if the meth was actually active or what? I, no, I have no idea on that one. No, no, this was Wildlife and Game Commission. That That's just a new level of uh, insanity to me. Oh, no, just, you know, I mean, as long as they're not hungry, you know. Cool. Right. Yeah, it's no big deal. They won't bite you unless they think you're food. Yeah, the, of course. Did you think we thought they're just running around biting people for no reason? I swear. I swear. Florida... I, I actually consider moving there because I love, you know, Miami. I love Disney World. I love the theme parks and stuff like that. But then I hear this stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, maybe not. Maybe I should just stay here where it's safe and people are actually Miami. Safe. Miami's a pretty awesome city, though, I got to say. I'll give that's the one one really great city I've been to in Florida. I'm not saying they're all horrible. I've been to great, you know, good places in Florida. But Miami's the only place that I would say, oh, man, love that place. Would love to go back someday. Everywhere else, nah, I don't need to go. Never been to Miami. I've always wanted to go, you know. I mean, but every time every time I think Miami, I think Scarface. You know what I'm saying, man? Huh? So go get Yeah, you man. The Cuban food is amazing. Oh, the yeah. nightlife is hot. The it's fun. It's a it's a lively atmosphere. It's a it's a fun city. It's hot though. So I'll like, give you that, that Florida. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. Well, Disney World too. You got Disney World for now. And, and you got Universal Studios Florida for now. Yeah, I've never <laughs> been to the Universal one. <laughs> Oh my God! Well, I mean, and Jeremy, you also mentioned that you also had uh, some th some news about a, a theme park. <laughs> Not a theme park. So I have one little thing here. Mm -hmm. Vietnam has added an attraction. They're mm -hmm. trying to boost tourism after the COVID shutdown. Uh, Vietnam actually takes in a large amount of its profits from tourism. People don't think of Vietnam and think tourism, but for about the last 10, 15 years, it has been a, a tourist mecca, and they have relied on those dollars. I believe they estimated the first three months of the shutdown for the tourists in the country would cost them $4.3 billion. So, wow. you know, Vietnam's changed a lot since the yeah. days we all remember. I mean, people in America think of Vietnam, they think of wartime, they think of all this, but things have changed. Think, it really I, is I, a... I honestly think Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> yeah, I that's what, that's what people think about. But as a foodie, I've followed Vietnam for a while now, and it's really a happening destination, great place to go. Um, the people are wonderful, very warm and inviting. Um, but they've created an attraction, and they believe it's the longest in the world, and it is a 2,000-plus foot glass-bottom suspension bridge. 500 feet above a lush Vietnam forest. Okay, that's a huge accident just waiting to freaking happen. Like, no, it's the engineering company did absolutely everything they could to make sure that it was there. These things exist all over the world, they're actually getting very popular now. Yeah, you go but ahead. This go is ahead. said. This is I'm going cool. when I go to Vietnam, I will be walking across that bridge. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. Oh, you was. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Are you kidding me? I'm going to look Heck down yeah. and be like, I'm already afraid of heights as it is. I hate flying, you know, because I'm scared <laughs> of it. And you're telling me that you want me to go over a glass bridge. Yes. This this isn't this isn't Oz. OK, we're not like yes. crossing the yellow brick freaking road here. All right. Yeah, you are. That, that's insanity. Who, I mean, one little who knows crack, what's in that forest? Who knows what's in that forest on the other side? I don't want to know. I'm okay with not knowing. I'm okay with not even, like, <laughs> not even recognizing. No, thanks. I'm no, I'm good. I'm good. You go Let ahead. us know what you guys think. I want to know who's on my side here. Who thinks that's really awesome and would give it a shot. And who thinks that's freaking insanity to, to even go over that, something like that. Well, oh, I'll gosh. tell you, I'll tell you this part, although as cool as it is, 
they tested this thing thoroughly. Up to 500 people at one time can cross it. D uh, traffic only goes in one direction. Mm -hmm. You can't enter it from the other side to save with any problems with people panicking and running out or anything else. And in testing it, they drove heavy machinery and heavy trucks all the way across it during testing. How would you like to be the guy that did that? We don't know if this is going to hold people. Drive that <laughs> truck across it. Okay. <laughs> How would you uh, like to have working, that job? Guys. I don't think it's working, guys. Uh, I think there's a crap right now, guys. Um. Beep, 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 go back. That's how they tested it. They did that many, many times with different levels of weight and different machinery, and and it held. It's a composite tempered glass, and it is rated for you know up to five hundred people. I I want to do it. I'm sorry. I've been rated skydiving. A. I want to do this one. It's it's rated A for ah. <laughs> <laughs> Run for your lives. We got Derek. Actually, he uh, he made a comment for about the alligator uh, story. He said, "I will say this in his uh, defense: alligators only eat usually once a week. So throw some food at it, and you should be good for at least five days." <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Pretty. <laughs> yeah it's accurate i like it oh my god uh tony says nice nice show guys thank you very much tony appreciate uh the support we appreciate all your support all the time uh again it's very very nice to be back on here i will not be going on that bridge i'll just say that much right freaking now <laughs> not gonna happen no thanks i'm good with that anyways moving on to uh some more then you have to come shark diving with me you know what though? Shark diving wouldn't be a bad thing. I'm not, I'm, I'm okay with shark diving. I'm just, as long as I'm secure behind the cage. No, I didn't say cages. Yeah. You're crazy. You're psychotic. Something's wrong with you. You know, something's really, really wrong with you. I, I just, you I can free, know. you could free dive off of South Africa with the great whites. Dude. How many times I got to tell you, I was, I, I don't know how to swim. I, I'm horrible. I, I really don't know how to swim. I die. I would fly. I, I don't float. I sink. Okay. There's a big difference. All right. Not going to happen. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Anyways. I mean, I, you know, and it's weird too, because one thing I actually wouldn't mind doing if I ever get the balls to do it is skydive. I actually do want to do that one day. I need well, to conquer that fear of heights that I have. I will tell you what my skydiving what my skydiving instructor told our class. Ninety nine <laughs> times out of come out, you're dead. <laughs> Ninety nine times out of a hundred, that's not a good idea. Most people who are trying to use it to conquer their fear of heights will never get out of the plane, and you just wasted like three hundred to eight hundred dollars. That's I'm just being serious. That was what he said. You get the occasional person who does it, but if you have a real fear of heights, if it's a real terrified, you know, paralyzing fear of heights, you ain't going to make it out the door. I'll tell you that right now, because even I got scared when we were going up. You have your little altimeter on your chest so you yeah. know how high you are. And as we're sitting in the plane, I'm sitting across from my, my little brother and I'm looking out the window behind him. And I think to myself, man, we're getting really high. We must be almost there. Mm -hmm. And I look at my altimeter and we're only at like 3000 feet. We have to go to 12,000 mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. we jump. Mm -hmm. I was the last person. They had a team, a skydiving team who was on our plane and they all went first. There's like 25 of them and they were doing formations and all kinds of cool stuff. So they all dove out first. And that's literally just me and my little brother. And of course he goes out because this is for his birthday. He's been dying to do this. This is why I took him. And he goes and he does it. Now I have to make the walk from the end of the plane where I was about 35 feet to the door. A long walk. And I swear to you, that was the longest 35 feet. I am not afraid of heights. That's <laughs> that, long, was the, that, that, that walk must have looked like a mile away from you. It was like one of those nightmares where the hallway keeps getting longer yeah. and you can't reach the end. Yeah. That's what it felt like. And honestly, everything in me wanted to chicken out. But the only thing that kept me going was my little brother just went. I ain't eaten that crow and backing out now. If I didn't go, I'd never hear the end of it from him. So I went. But I'll tell you, 
as excited as I was. And I mean, I was just pumped. I mean, there was no hesitation in me. When I had that realization about where we were and how high up we were really going, dude, it almost made me not do it. So picture that, but picture that with your deep fear. I think I would have to like maybe do a couple of practice runs on the floor and just mm -hmm. like little by little, like jump off of one of those tall things or whatever into like, you know. We'll go to Chicago first and we'll go to the Sears Tower. They have the the platform that rotates out. You're up like 100 feet and it's all glass and it literally leans you out. So you're looking straight down the building. Basically, I mean, you're not vertical. You're, you're only like this, but we'll do that first. That'll be a good. And if you can handle that, we'll talk about skydiving. And if I piss my pants, it'll be your fault. We're not going. <laughs> I'll bring we'll, we'll bring some depends. It'll be okay. awesome. Perfect <laughs> bet. We'll go ahead and do it that way. Then. Oh, my God. The things I do for just for entertainment purposes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Cindy is asking, uh, what do you guys think about Bauer? About what? Bauer. Bauer. Yeah. Can you elaborate with that, Cindy? Kind of wondering about that myself. Is it, I think it has to do with the Dodgers, maybe? We'll get back to that in a second. Anyways, uh, we're, moving for, we're moving on to some entertainment news. Obviously, we know... Uh, that there's a big trial going on right now uh, that has to do with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. I mean, I'm, you guys haven't heard from me. You've been living under a rock. Uh, <laughs> it's a huge defamation trial that has to do with uh, Johnny Depp suing uh, Amber Heard for $50 million. Uh, so far, there's been a lot of talk back and forth, a lot of deliberation, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of back and forth involving both uh, the defense and et cetera. But one person that actually has something to say about this was uh, Drew Barrymore. And I know, uh, Jeremy, you know, Drew. Um, she has her own show. And on her show, she actually made light of the situation by saying, quote, it's like one layer of crazy. It's a seven layer dip of insanity. I know that these are two people's real lives. And I know what it's like to have your life put out in public. I understand all the feelings, but they are actually offering up this information that nobody had to know. This is crazy. Now, a lot of her followers, a lot of the fans were actually very upset at, uh, at what she had to say uh, in, in that whole situation. So she had to offer up an apology. She said, um, basically, she said, uh, she went ahead and said, it has come, quote, it has come to my attention that I have offended people with making light of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. And for that, I just want to deeply apologize and appreciate everyone who spoke out because this can be a teachable moment for me and how I move forward and how I conduct myself. All I want to do is be a good person. I can be a more thoughtful and better person moving forward because all I want to do is be a good person. And I very much appreciate the depth of this and I will grow and change from it. And, and I thank everyone helping me grow along the way and teaching me. Thank you. This is actually in a video uh, she posted. Uh, yes. So so she went ahead. I, uh, real, real quick uh, segue. Derek that's a, I, Derek says, Trevor Bauer, pitcher for LA, getting oh, two years suspension. The Trevor yeah. Bauer, got it. Yeah, I, I figured it would have to do with, uh, with the suspension of the Dodgers. I wasn't sure, though. Anyways, uh, going back to this. So, I mean, a lot of people may have, and a lot of people are saying that some overreacted over what Drew Barrymore said, uh, the of her comments. I mean, it really wasn't that much offensive. I mean, not to me well, from what I can hear. And yeah. obviously, Drew, she's a good person. She's a nice person. She would never mean any ill will towards anybody regarding the situation. Me hearing it, I didn't really. I mean, it's very tame to me. I mean, that didn't sound like her making fun of them, really. It didn't even sound like she made that much light of it, but mm -hmm. I thought it was good of her to, you know, take a lesson from it and, and apologize. I mean, if you offended people, that's, you know, that's who she is. She's going to apologize. There are people in this world who don't care if they offend people and that's okay too. You know, it's not, True. it's not how I live my life. You know, I, I don't go out of my way, but I'm certainly not trying to piss people off every day. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no comments from you. Thank you very much. 
I'm biting my tongue right now. <laughs> but it's really, it's really awesome that she did apologize. She used it as a teachable moment. And as you can see, she's very humble. That's how I knew her. And that's how I've always known her is to be a very humble, very kind person. I don't think there was any animosity there. And I certainly, I didn't hear anything that was that bad. Yeah, neither did I. I mean, from what I saw, it doesn't seem, she just seems to be like, like a lot of other people saying what she's feeling over mm -hmm. this trial, the fact of the matter that there's just so much that's been put out there of their private lives mm -hmm. that it's just insane. Some of the stuff that's coming out, some of the some of the stuff regarding, you know, Johnny getting beaten up by Amber, allegedly, uh, you know, the whole poop on the bed. Uh, according to what what Amber told, I believe, a driver or bodyguard, she said that that was a prank that went horribly, horribly wrong. How could a prank pooping on somebody's bed go horribly wrong? Did she not mean to do it? I mean, it's just, it's yeah. just, it's like she said, it's a level of insanity that's going on right well, now. And yeah, granted, it, it's, it, go ahead. it is a serious level of insanity just in the details and the kind of sordidness of the details, the, you know, the drugs, the sex, the, I mean, it's the classic trifecta in Hollywood. You got sex, drugs, and a wildlife, you know, abuse, all sorts of stuff. But the part that's the most interesting to me, and as you know, I have always said this about these cases, is we need not to rush to judgment. We need to wait until the details come out. And as you've seen, as we've all seen, the public persona or the public perception has now shifted pretty significantly. Um, Amber Heard and her PR team previous to this trial and during the divorce used the media and used their PR to slander Johnny mm -hmm. all over the place. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's I don't know if it will if they'll find that in court, but it is kind of the definition of what they did and public perception and public outrage was at Johnny. You know, everybody's like, look at how horrible he is. You know, he needs to be strung up. He needs not to work again. There was, you know, as you like to say, the cancel culture thing, though I do not believe in it. Um, you know, people were going nuts. It was a witch calling, hunt towards Johnny. You know, calling for Johnny's head. Now all the details are coming out. And although his life is not exactly wholesome. <laughs> to but say then again, the whose is? To say the least. But now public perception has shifted and people are seeing the details and everybody's like damn poor johnny what was he having to go through and deal with and you know i'm sorry but just from looking at this i mean this woman is absolutely vindictive and nuts so you know again public perception has completely changed and shifted here so again, we need to wait on these things until the actual facts start coming out. That's why I will always give you my opinion. I will always tell you that, you know, oh, this is bad if it happened or otherwise. But until we know all the facts, you know, you got to reserve final judgment. You have to. You can't go calling for people's heads because someone said something. I think it would you know, have been this a great person lawyer. said. I, well, you know me. I like to argue. It yeah, you, you bad, definitely. The, the you, whole. And you look at things from that perspective, from a lawyer's perspective, that you can't really judge anybody until the facts are present, until all the facts are present, until all the evidence is out there for us to actually it, say, OK, he did do this. I mean, it's obvious. It, it's the Libra in me. It's the balance thing. You can't give me an even choice. I need the facts. You know, I'm Very sorry. True. That's how I've always been. You, you can't give me an even choice. I will never be able to make the decision. Let's see, to piss me off, to not piss me off. Oh, piss you off. That's that's my goal in life. Dude. Yeah, and always like kind of tends to like roll this way for some reason. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, my God. Uh, Alex is saying anyone who says teachable moment is in deep trouble. Yeah, possible. I mean, that's just a PR thing. We we really don't know if she was in actual like a lot of trouble over what she said. Yeah, uh, I I doubt she was in much hot water over this. Um, again, she has, it was she's been squeaky clean for a long time. Like, it was extremely it was extremely tame. And I don't see her getting too much more backlash after this. And as you said, the teachable moment thing, that's just PR jargon. You oh, know, that's yeah. it's every PR publicist is going to tell you, you know, you got to say some form of that. Um, 
But again, knowing her, I'd still say it was relatively heartfelt, even if I'm sure she was like, what? That, that wasn't even that bad. Yeah. You know, I'm sure I'm sure that was her reaction. But, you know, knowing her, I would say that it was still heartfelt. Like people want my head, but but I'm Joe Barrymore. Like, what what did I do wrong? Oh, my God. Well, I mean, again, teachable moment. She's probably she's probably going to have a few of these. Everybody always does. They always like, you know, mm -hmm. in an, inadvertently and um without knowing put their foot in their mouths and others like kind of tend to zero in on that and say oh well you said that okay what about it well that's bad because this oh mm -hmm. really crap i didn't know that you know so it's gonna happen more often than not it always does so it is what it is but at least she apologized she owned up to whatever it was that she or whoever it was she offended in my opinion again i don't think she did a bad thing but whatever it is what it is i actually um wanted to chat with you jeremy about something that caught my attention this morning actually um so a friend of yours julie yes, went ahead julie mccullough julie mccullough she went ahead and she sent uh she actually agreed with a tweet early this morning that really really caught my attention having to do with your former co-star kirk cameron uh somebody posted something uh, not too long ago, actually. And uh, she went ahead and let me see if I could find it here. Um, she agreed with the post, actually. Uh, and it had to do like, I'm trying to find it because it just it just popped into my head. And I was like, wait a minute, I forgot she did that this morning. I wanted to talk to you about this. Um, uh, unfortunately, I can't find it. It had something to do with uh, Kirk Cameron and that whole situation she might have deleted the tweet i don't know a lot of uh, tweets have been going through this the entire time but it has something to do with uh with him and somebody making a comment about his christianity something like that and julie kind of said well it's about time you guys actually see this i mean that situation between her and kirk isn't exactly fixed hasn't been fixed in years i mean kirk hasn't and, really apologized to her for well, kind of Here's the thing, and I'll tell you this again. I don't believe it will ever be fixed because this is just my belief. I love Julie to death, and she knows this is my opinion. You know, we disagree. She has her opinion. But I do not believe that Kirk had her fired from the show. She believes that he did. Very, very specifically, she believes that he did. Now, here's the deal. I'll give you my what the background I know. First, I know that fans did not want Mike to marry Julie. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was one of the first big things. There was huge backlash. Not that they didn't like Julie's character. They didn't want Mike married. Okay, and unfortunately, at that point, the producers had already introduced that storyline and having them not get married yet keep her in the show was not going to be feasible. Real quick, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to yes. cut you off real quick. I found the tweet, I actually yes. found it. Uh, it was actually a response uh, to uh, another Twitter uh, follower. Uh, she posted, this person posted, remember that time when Kirk Cameron got Julie McCullough fired from Growing Pains because she appeared on Playboy? Yeah, I'd rather not take educational advice from a judgmental, judgmental twat nozzle. She went ahead and responded by saying, and I now throw in a little white flag while yelling hallelujah, amen, preach on at Merrily 727. Everybody seems to be seeing what I've known for decades. He's a wannabe book burner using a so-called pulpit after being homeschooled on a TV set. Harsh. As I said, <laughs> yes. But again, Julie has her idea of how that all went down and it hasn't changed. And, you know, she's she's free to believe whatever she wants. And I, all I know is what I know and why I believe what I believe. And I believe it didn't go down that way. Um, but it doesn't shock me that she would respond with something like that. She's been pretty, you know, vehement and vitriol since Kirk before that, you know, before any of his becoming more of a Christian spokesman and, and public figure and all of his... Um, more right-wing leanings that he's been vocal about and stuff like that before any of that even happened she had animosity towards him for what happened on the show or how she believed it went down on top of that pretty much everything kirk stands for and has been very public about is pretty much the opposite of how julie thinks you know kirk has come out against gay marriage 
he's come out against all the and it's literally polar opposites of how julie is so again this was never going to be a good relationship i don't see this ever being fixed or healed they are incredibly different people and they both have their own ideas as to how her leaving the show went down and again I, you know me, I have not defended Kirk for a lot of the things he's done recently, but on this instance, I do not believe he had her fired. Again, our producers quit after the sixth season because of how Kirk was, because of how strict he was getting and how he's trying to force his views into the show and make them rewrite things. And our entire producer staff and writers quit. Wow. They, within two years of that happening, gave interviews everybody knew why they had already been vocal about why they quit it was well known that kirk had been the problem and they had the opportunity when asked about the julie situation to say kirk asked us to get rid of him or kirk asked abc and abc made us get rid of her and they did not they backed kirk in that he never did that that's what the producers said they said he, kirk never had her fired it had to do with the fans not wanting Julie to, you know, Mike to get married and all of those things. That that was it. That So, again, that's why I believe what I believe. I don't know for sure. I will never know for sure unless one of the producers changes their story and says publicly, yes, that's why we did it. But at the time, they had no love for Kirk. They had just left a show where they were making hundreds of thousands of dollars because they couldn't stand working with him at the time. So they could have easily buried him if they wanted to, even lied to, to bury exactly. him if they wanted to. They had no reason to negate that story, and yet they did. So that is why I truly believe that it didn't go down that way. Well, like I said, sorry, sorry to bring that one up. I just, I just had remembered that, and I wanted to get your opinion Mm -hmm. on that on that on that tweet actually from her uh so i mean i guess uh i guess the the truth will inevitably inevitably be between the producers and everything that everybody was, was involved because you were an outside person looking in you really exactly. didn't know what was going on you were you were I, doing your i was own a kid thing. i mean i was yeah. you know i was like 13 14 when this was happening now as a very aware kid that's why i noticed these things that's why i knew what was going on i had good relationships with the adults on the set who would tell me things that were going on. I was friends with the people who worked in the office who would keep me appraised as to what was going on. I was a very aware 13, 14, 15 year old. Um, so I saw and made formed my own opinions of why things were going down based upon the information I got over the years. But no, we'll never truly know unless one of the producers changes his story and says, no, this is exactly why we did it. Um, and again, I'll say this again. I love the both of them. I adore Julie. I love her. She's one of my dearest friends. Kirk is my brother. He's always going to be my brother. I may not agree with a lot of the stuff he stands for right now. You know what? I don't agree with a lot of the stuff my older brother, my real older brother stands for either. Doesn't mean I don't love him. You know, I may not have the close relationship I once had with him, but I'm always going to love him and I'm always going to be there for him. And you're always going to love me too. We'll see. Joni makes me. <laughs> that hurts. hurts a lot. Did you see him die inside a little, folks? I just, I just, a little, a little, a little, I died a lot, man. Anywho, well, uh, <laughs> going from, uh, going from one set to another set, it seems that uh, Troubles of Bruin and Fast Fury's 10 set already. Now, as you guys may have remembered, we uh, a few months back we actually talked about how Vin Diesel wanted to get the Rock back and how he was very uh, he was very demeaning in the, in his words and kind of just you know made him look like oh well you know I mean he's just like a little brother and blah 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 he even tried to put in Paul Walker's uh, you know death into all this that, oh you know Paul would have wanted you to be a part of this cast. A few months later, after we we made uh, we we did that show, Rock actually went ahead and said. Don't you dare do that. Don't do that. Okay. Don't put our, 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 our beef in public like that. I will not come back. This is not going to happen. Pretty much rock told him off. 
Well, it looks like The Rock's not the, Dwayne Johnson's not the only person that has told Vin Diesel off because now the director who has directed all nine, well, practically all nine Fast and Furious movies has said goodbye. Justin Lin is no longer the director of Fast and the Furious 10. He actually had a big blowout with Vin Diesel. Now, this is according to The Hollywood Reporter. It says, quote, Lynn's decision to quit was a spur-of-the-moment decision driven by differences of opinion over the script. Where Lynn considered the script finished, Diesel and Universal apparently disagreed. The conflict apparently came to a head when Diesel showed up with additional notes on April 23rd, leading to a shutdown match, or I'm sorry, excuse me, to a shouting match that ended with a slammed door. Well, surprise, surprise there. Uh, looks like, uh, I mean, Vin Diesel strikes again. He went ahead and drove another member of the Fast and the Furious family out of Fast and the Furious. Jeremy, what are your thoughts on this? Again, I'm going to say, <clears throat> until we have all the facts, I'm going to reserve final judgment. Oh, God. But... You know, it's this is seems to be becoming a bit of a pattern. It, you know, it seems that Vin is getting a little difficult and kind of wants it how he wants it on the set and uh, everybody else be damned. That's what it's starting to look like, um, you know, and that's not that's not going to work. I don't care if it's your franchise. I don't care if, you know, I mean, I hate to say this. I mean, on, I'm, I'm not being mean. I love the stuff Vin Diesel's done. But what does he have except for fast the fast series right now? He doesn't, you know, yeah, his other, X. which didn't do that great. And, you know, it it was never considered. That's what I mean. It He hasn't done it. When and when was the original Triple X done? It was 15 years yeah, ago. Yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah. You know, it was or more than that. Probably. Riddick? Chronicles of Riddick, too. And also Riddick. That was pretty good. No, sorry, it was not. I actually liked Riddick. The Riddick first one, Pitch Black, I'm was sorry, great. Pitch Black. I like, the I first like one, Black, Pitch yeah. Black, was great. The second one was god awful, Weird. and was this weird. third one I don't even really want to no, see. No, there was no third so, one. I don't think there was a third one. There is a third one coming out. There a, there's a third one coming out. Yeah, it's called like it's called Riddick or something like that. Just why would Riddick they do that? Or, like, I have no they... idea. I saw <laughs> I saw some preview or something for it, but anyway, like I said, he doesn't have a lot else going on in the end. I mean, he's not being offered you know other big action roles. That's I'm not being mean. I'm not criticizing him. It's just that's the fact. You're not seeing him get other big action roles being off you know, to be brought into these other big projects right now. Fast is all he's got. And I mean, if that's all you got, why are you acting like a diva on set? You know, I mean, this I, I it, it's just again, it seems to be a pattern at this point. But again, I don't know. I, I, mean, I wasn't there. I didn't see how it went down. I've seen way too many conflicts on set before and there's always two sides to the story so i i really don't know i mean our director used to tell stories about him and tony danza almost coming to blows when he directed who's the boss really tony danza oh, it, he seems like a our, real chill dude our director was from the bronx tony's from brooklyn ah. two new york alpha males you know they were almost throwing chairs at each other at different times you know so i've i've seen it i've heard it there's always two sides to the story but right now, with what happened with The Rock and then with the director leaving, it is starting to look like, you know, Vin's getting a little, you know, demanding on set and it's rubbing people the wrong way. I mean, they have a brand new director that's actually going to be directing that's taking over Lynn's place. It's uh, Louis uh, Leterrier. He was the one that directed The Incredible Hulk, the one starring Edward Norton. Which is the one you know, the one was, we liked, yes. The one we like, exactly. Yeah, that's the one we like. So that's a pretty good director to have uh, to replace Lynn. I don't know. Mm -hmm. it, I, I've never really actually seen anything other than The Incredible Hulk from La Terrier. So I have no idea how well of a director he's going to be for the Fast uh, franchise. But we'll see what yeah. happens there. I, I don't mean, really could it know be either. Possible, could it be possible, Jeremy, that that maybe Ben Diesel is feeling the pressure of getting all these movies out? I mean, you know, last year with COVID, they had to shut down production for a lot of movies and now they're coming back and a lot of the old uh, actors, they're not coming back. I mean, Dwayne Johnson was a was a huge uh, part of the Fast and Furious family. Uh, Jason Momoa seems like I think I believe he's taking over uh, what would be, you know, Dwayne Johnson's place mm -hmm. because he's actually already started filming. Uh, for the new Fast and Furious movie. But could it be possible that he's just under a lot of pressure with all these changes that are going on? I mean, you have 
Paul Walker that passed away. That was something that was well, completely that's... unexpected. And I believe that ever since then, it's been Vin Diesel like trying to just keep it together after Paul passed away. Well, I think I think you're on to something there. I mean, he's definitely on under a lot of stress with this. As I said, I mean, it's not like he has a lot of other major franchises or offers going right now. And on top of that, he wants to do it right for his his buddy, Paul. You know, he wants to make sure these are right. So maybe that's why he's got so many notes and he's so set on having it done a certain way. That's why I'm saying I don't know what the other side of that story is. Maybe that's why he's being so difficult about it is because he sees something that they're working with that isn't right. And he wants this to be perfect for Paul. That's what I mean. I'm going to reserve judgment. We just don't know. Because we're not there. and We have no idea what's what's going on anyway. So exactly, man. Well, regardless, we're going to have to wait and see how the finished product will be without Justin Lin. I mean, Justin Lin's an incredible director, and I truly believe that it's going to be it's going to be a very difficult one. So we'll see what happens. Uh, on to something very fun for you, Jimmy. I mean, you've done this at the beginning of the show. We're actually switching up a little bit here on the Navarro Miller Report before we used to do uh, blind react TikToks for Jeremy on here now we have uh we're doing a little bit like someone in the middle so that way we could uh make sure that you guys stay entertained and uh what this this particular tiktok that i got for you jeremy is actually kind of a fun one uh <laughs> it has to do with uh a dad doing what a dad does but screwing up majorly let's go ahead and check it out You didn't get a hundred in time, it's twenty bucks, two ten dollar bills. Give me that actually a hundred. I think the tooth fairy was drinking last night. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That's pretty good. I mean, was the truth fairy drinking last night? <laughs> Left her a hundred dollar bill by accident. <laughs> and he went to go look at his wallet, and he's all crap. <laughs> I mean, Jeremy, you you have three boys. Have you have you ever has this ever happened to you where you like accidentally give them something by accident that you were supposed to do? Well, you have to understand. Um, I was drinking for a large portion of their. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> their childhood so unfortunately and i i say that laughingly because i've dealt with all of this i know that's a horrible thing to say believe me i know how bad that sounds yeah but you know it's the truth um unfortunately i was a drunk through a lot of their childhood so yes i did um i, I can't remember the actual times but i'm sure i did it a couple of times um you know, handing them a 20 instead of a five or whatever, uh, putting, you know, too much in the card. I'm sure I did it multiple times, but truthfully, I was such a drunk. I couldn't tell you when or remember the actual. <laughs> oh, God. Nice. Well, I got another one for you, actually. This has to do with uh, female home skincare, And uh, this one was actually very, very interesting, very fascinating. I think uh, I think we could all learn a little something from this. Check it out. What's up, guys? A lot of you have been asking to see my nighttime skincare routine, so here it is. First, I start with a foaming cleanser. I like this one by Clinique because it's nice and gentle. I follow that with a BHA liquid exfoliant, 2%. Don't forget the neck. And after all this, I usually wear my red light therapy mask for about 15 minutes. And while I'm wearing it, I decide who I'm going to kill. For this part, of course, I need a murder weapon. Here, I'm just using a common knife from the kitchen because, I don't know, I'm lazy. This one's serrated, which makes it harder to kill someone, but a bit of fun as well. This one's made by Henkels. I really love it. I do the deed, excuse me for the camera work here, it's really hard to film that, and I move the body to a secure location. This person was shorter than the people that I normally kill, so this was a bit easier to move, but still always a struggle to lift it into a dumpster. This is a friend's dumpster, so the police can't trace this back to me. I lift it all by myself, which is always a little difficult, and I follow all of this with rose water spray and moisturizer. Good night. <laughs> I love how at the end she's like, I follow this with rose water spray and moisturizer. <laughs> that may be the best skincare tutorial <laughs> I've ever seen. I swear. <laughs> because dude. as soon as she grabbed the UV mask, the first thought in my head was, who are you going to kill next? So that was perfect. <laughs> 
<laughs> I swear, man. I swear. These TikTokers, they crack me up every single time. They come up with the most, like, the most creative ways. My, and My mother would have come out of the bathroom in the dark and scared the living crap out of me wearing that. <laughs> yeah i can see that i can see that um it, and it's so funny because the like she actually got me she got me i was watching it i was like oh another another do-it-yourself video and mm -hmm. then it took a turn and i was like what <laughs> <laughs> i had to rewind it i was like wait what did she just say right now <laughs> oh, i gotta love these so uh this last one i'm going to show you actually was kind of a fun this is a mother mother's son and Oh, it's just so beautiful. Like he's he's a very talented individual. I'll just I'll just tell you that. Go ahead and check this out. And son of the year. Oh my goodness. That is awesome. I swear. I, the first time I saw that, I was crying. I was laughing so hard. I was oh. like, such a talented young man. Uh, with, Amazingly with talented. I mean, he every single move, he made it so much fun. It's just, that's beautiful that they have that kind of a relationship for him to go ahead and do that. The Star that Wars is, one had me. The that Star is Wars heartwarming <laughs> and funny and brilliant and yeah. He's incredibly talented, but that was just hysterical. That was awesome. Moving on to uh, some sports. Jeremy, the NFL draft, the bane of my existence right now. Yeah. Well, I, I got to say, I was actually really impressed with this year's draft um, for having what many people considered to be a pretty thin draft on big name talent. Um, a lot of the bottom feeders for lack of a better word i'm sorry but that's the case really had amazing drafts um you know a lot of the teams that are notorious for drafting poorly and making decisions that you're like what the hell are they doing thinking taking that guy you know it didn't happen so much this year i mean the the teams that generally do that the jets the raiders the giants didn't happen you know jacksonville didn't happen these guys drafted really great. In fact, the Jets and the Giants had two of the top three draft classes out of everybody. And they are, again, notorious for just drafting useless talent and, I mean, head-scratching decisions. And yet they, like the Jets, three number one players at their position in their first three picks. They got the best cornerback, uh, Sauce Gardner, which let's talk about this guy for a second. Four-year starter didn't allow a touchdown in four years. That's, not that's one not touchdown in four years. Last year, he allowed 63 yards total for the season. Total. He didn't allow one single receiver to get more than 13 yards in a game. This guy might be the most amazing defensive secondary prospect to come out of college ever. I mean, and he's just going to get better with age. That's the thing. Well, He's just going to get better experience. With the coach is working with him. I mean, it's this guy. The sky is the limit with him. The only thing they've talked about is he's going to have to adjust his physicality a little bit for the NFL 
Um, he likes to mix it up and get a little physical with the way the refs have been. They throw a lot of flags recently in the NFL. He's going to have to adjust a little bit to that. He's going to have to pull back a touch physically. But other than that, I'm really excited to see what this kid can do. They grabbed a top offensive tackle to protect their quarterback. They grabbed the number one running back in the class in the third round. They gra- I mean, just an incredible draft. Baltimore had an amazing draft. I drafted um, the top cornerback, one of the top cornerbacks in the game, which I'll give a little love to your team here. The Notre Dame safety who uh, got drafted number one by uh, Baltimore. Incredible pickup. Baltimore up and down. They had four or six draft picks in the fourth round, and they turned all of them into potential starters. Mm -hmm. Um, But then again, of course, as always, we had some duds as usual. Um, The Packers, uh, you know, we left yeah, us we, kind of we, scratching we, their, our heads as to what they were doing. But, but at the same time, you also had a very good point. Um, we talked about this actually a mm-hmm. couple of nights ago, where unfortunately, because the Packers, they did so well during the regular season that they don't have the best picks. They have pretty much whatever's left over. Now, if exactly. they did horribly this season, they'll be at the top of the list of the first uh, first drafts. Now, mm-hmm. that's something that that would be a great, but be horrible at the same time. I, I mean, I'm kind of torn with that. And like you said, Aaron Rodgers would not want that. Now that Devonte Adams is gone and he went to the Raiders, we are lacking wide receivers. I mean, we, we picked up a couple wide receivers in the draft, which is fine, but we still have no offensive line that can protect Rodgers in the pocket. That's going to be a problem. Honestly, this season, I don't see us going to the Super Bowl. As I told you before, I don't see the Packers going all the way. I see them again getting eliminated at the very first round of the playoffs. But again, if they make it all the way there, we're screwed for the draft again. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna be a tough one for us. Well, it's what we were talking about. Is that it's it's a cycle that you see play out with um, great cornerbacks, uh, quarterbacks, or great, you know, um, gr- any great offensive player, great running backs, that kind of thing. Is that if they're a superstar for that team, the team wants to hold on to them as long as they can. Mm. But while holding on to that superstar, they will never get bad enough to get decent picks to build up around their superstar. And that superstar is not quite super enough anymore to carry them by himself to get to that top, top level. So you're stuck in that middle ground we're better than most but not quite and it keeps you from ever really getting impactful players in the draft and you see it i mean you saw it with the you know drew Brees in new orleans you saw it with matt ryan and the falcons you saw it you see it with all of these superstars for their teams in those last few years it becomes very hard to build back up again around them because they keep you just good enough and that's that's not where you want to be. You either got to be all the way at the top or you want to be bad enough to rebuild. So it's a tough decision for a lot of GMs. The fans are always hurt when a superstar leaves. So do you break your fans' hearts? You know, it, it's tough. Um, so that's why, I mean, I don't criticize them. They had a poor draft, but it wasn't them making dumb decisions. Sure. Um, Chicago, no idea what the hell they were thinking. They had Justin Fields, one of the top rookie quarterbacks last year. And what do they do? They build nothing but defense with their first, you know, their first good picks. They didn't give him any supporting cast. They didn't get anybody on the offensive line who can, you know, come in right away and help. They had high enough picks because they stunk last year and they did nothing. They went all defense and left their quarterback with nothing, basically. And that's not you don't do that. You don't draft a star quarter quarterback and then give him nothing to succeed with. It's gonna be I, mean, a I don't major... care how good I don't care how good your defense is. If you can't score points, you don't win games. There's gonna be a major shakeup this year, this season, actually. There, well, we we talked about this last year that there were there's gonna be a major shakeup for this season anyway, because of everything that all the changes that have been going on. I mean, you know, you got the Green Bay Packers. Rodgers was up in the air. Now Devontae Adams is gone. I mean, you have a lot of quarterbacks left. I mean, you have Ben Roethlisberger that left Pittsburgh. Um, you know, there's a lot of changes. A lot of there's been a lot of a shakeup. I mean, I I have no idea what's going on with Garoppolo. I have no idea if he's going to continue on with the Niners or not. If that's going to happen, uh, you know, I mean. There's there's a lot of stuff that's gonna that that uh, these teams have to reconsider and check out. 
I mean, Aaron Donald retired. I mean, he said he wanted to run it back with the Rams, but that's not going to happen. He pretty much just said that just to say that he so far there is no word that he's returning. He retired. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Rams need a, a new team. They need a brand new team because pretty much a lot of their starters uh, in defense are gone. And, well, you know, it, it, they, they were they were going to be going anyway. These guys are guys that were either going to retire if they if they won or if they lost. They didn't care. They're going to retire anyway. Or there were guys that came back from retirement just to fill in the holes and then left again because they're like, OK, I got what I needed. Now I'm leaving. Well, this was an actual choice by the Rams. They took the strategy we've seen with a lot of teams, and it was a win now strategy. They sacrificed their future to get that Super Bowl, and they got it, you know, so it worked. But it, because we've seen it not work for a lot of teams, you know, they do that and then they end up sacrificing the next six years of their team's future without getting the ring. And at least the Rams got that. But the truth is, as you said, they're losing a lot of the veterans that helped them get that. They won the Super Bowl, so they had no draft position. And on top of that, they gave up their first three draft picks for um, Matt Stafford. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In the trade to get him for last year. So they didn't even pick till the third or fourth round this year. Like I said, they sacrificed their future. But it was a conscious decision, and it worked out. They won the Super Bowl. They got their ring. It worked. That was the strategy. It worked. But now they're going to have to rebuild. Back-to-back uh, -back championship is not in the cards for this team. <laughs> I don't think so either. I don't think so either because, like you said, they sacrificed everything just to get them to the Super Bowl. That's not going to happen. I mean, I think that's the reason why the coach was like, please say you're winning back. Please, I'm begging you, please, <laughs> because he knew. He knew that if they're not coming back, that's it. That's the only Super Bowl they're going to have for a very long time until they exactly. can rebuild the team again. Yeah, so, it'll take them four or five years, most likely, unless they just go crazy in free agency and throw out a lot of money. Um, but again, I don't think we'll be seeing a repeat championship this year. In fact, with a couple key injuries, the Rams are you know one or two key injuries away from not even making the playoffs this year. So. Um, we'll see how it goes, but it's been an, it was a really interesting draft and I got to say a very positive draft for a lot of teams. So I'm sure a lot of you out there are feeling very, uh, you know, hopeful for the new season. And, uh, oh, before we, before we wrap this up, um, Cindy, the Trevor Bauer situation. I was just, I was actually going to go ahead and talk about that right now too. Um, it's a tough situation. Again, we don't have all the facts. The court documents have not been made public. We don't know everything about it. What we do know is there was enough evidence for this to be a very long and thorough investigation. And unfortunately, we just don't know enough about it at the moment. Is this a case of a woman, you know, who is making things out to be more than they were because she wants some money? I hope that's not the case. I don't, I'm not trying to shame the victim here or anything else, but we don't know what's going on. There was not enough evidence for them to actually prosecute this guy. So a civil trial seems like it will be coming and most likely facts will be forthcoming in the civil trial. At that point, maybe we'll have a clearer idea, um, but it's a tough situation for everybody because you know, the Dodgers are put in a very, very tough spot if they do play him and it turns out he is, you know, responsible for this and was doing horrible things. Then they've had this guy playing on their team and we're supporting him if real they quick, get real, rid of him. Real quick, just just to go ahead and cut you off, because I'm looking at the story right now. This is what we do know. He has been suspended uh, for uh, for three hundred and twenty four games. That's that's yes. practically two years, two seasons, two years. That's two the longest seasons, ever. Years. And basically what's happening right okay. now, is that according to ESPN, it says, quote, because he did not agree to the suspension. Bauer can file a grievance to be judged by an arbitrator who is hired and can be fired in concert by the league and the players union. Bauer's side, his lawyers, as well as the MLB Players Association will present its case. MLB will present its own. The arbitrator will render a decision. The domestic violence policy doesn't specify when this hearing needs to be, take place, and there is no timetable at the moment. One key difference between Bauer's case and other player appeals, 
the automatic stay for an appeal of a PED suspension does not exist in the league's domestic violence policy. So he will not be able to pitch during the process. Mm-hmm. That's the answer right there. That's that's pretty yeah. much what we're looking at, what he's looking yeah. at right there. And like I said, that leaves the Dodgers in a very tough pickle because they're either going to be the guys who hired and supported a you know person guilty of domestic violence who may be a predator i don't know what the details were i mean that's if it's serious enough then that's who they let on the team and they're going to be crucified for that if it comes out that she's full of it then they're going to be crucified for you know getting rid of him and possibly face you know financial and legal restitution towards him they're in a very very difficult position right now and truthfully with the seriousness of domestic violence you've got to come down on the side of caution and not have him play you just have to correct that's the news in case you haven't heard it thank you so much again for joining us here on the navarro miller report uh we'd like to again welcome everybody back we are back the boys are back and we're going to be coming at you every monday and friday from 6 p.m to 7 p.m pacific standard time uh i'm your host dave navarro unfortunately with this guy right here and i'm jeremy miller guys we're glad to be back thank you for joining us and uh remember head on over to youtube and uh Go ahead and subscribe, like it, share, do all that stuff for us. It really helps us out. And uh, we'll see you guys in a couple days. Perfect. And uh, remember, also check the replay out tomorrow on Spotify in case you missed a couple of things right here or you had internet trouble that you went out. Spotify, iHeartRadio.com. You can go ahead and check us out right there. All the links are in uh, my Instagram, which is at Dave Navarro uh, 1.0, I think it is, or one, something like that, at Dave Navarro 1. You'll find me one way or another. You'll know what's up. Uh, but uh, my it's in my link tree. All the links to all the episodes, including this one, will be right there. So make sure you check us out. Subscribe to our YouTube. Subscribe to all our social medias. And we will see you again Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you so much, everybody. And we will see you next time. You have been listening to The Navarro Miller Report.